Smart home gyms have exploded over the last few years. There are dozens of brands out there pretty much all claiming that they can all do it all. So we're gonna be looking at the cheaper option today from Unitop and seeing if their claims of the all-in-one system is true at the lower price points to see if it is worth saving your money or if you do need to shell out a little bit more for some of the other competition. So let's check it out. What's up guys, it's Andrew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we usually do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. This one's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a fitness product. I will leave a link down below to their crowdfunding campaign. I believe it's on Indiegogo right now. It is a very competitive price as compared to some of the competition, but you know, it's not worth spending even a couple hundred bucks if it's just total junk. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. It came with the long bar, the belt, the tricep rope, the handles, the other style of handles and ankle straps. So it does seem to come with just about as many accessories as you could ever need. And mine also came with the pro or plus option, which is all kinds of other possibilities to use this with. I'll be going over that more in just a little bit. So first things first, the best part about this product, if you ask me, it's right here, is the portability. It does charge with the battery, USB-C port on the back, and it's got wheels on the side here. You can lift it up from the side here and there's a little indent for your hand at the bottom. And you can just wheel it around anywhere you want. Place this in the center of your room for your workout, and then when you're done, it can be as simple as tucking it up against the wall there just like that, and it only takes up about a foot of room from the wall. That is the best part about this product, if you ask me. It is just extremely portable. It weighs, I don't know, 35 pounds maybe. We'll talk about later. Could be a disadvantage to it, but if you do want to be able to move it around easily, that is a nice thing. So the accessories clip on with these little carabiners here to the handles. And then if you wanted to say use a handle, you can clip the handle onto the carabiner to do your exercise. Same goes with the bar and every other accessory here. So since this is the main unit and this is all that comes with it besides the accessories, to do some of the movements like a bench press for example, you will need to use your own bench, straddle it like this, and attach the bar or handles, whatever you want to use. Now, I could go over a bunch of the exercises, but there is an extensive list of what can be done. I'll go over a few individual exercises that really stand out with this unit. Also, now is a good time to mention that this only uses concentric mode, not eccentric mode. And that is a big deal for a lot of people. I feel like eccentric mode is very important, but it's not necessarily necessary for everybody in every circumstance so keep that in mind if you're not sure what concentric and eccentric is if i'm doing a curl i've got 20 pounds loaded up right now this is a concentric and this is the eccentric there's no weight on the way down only on the way up now it is basically nothing and here's the weight now there is no weight and that is just the technology that is used here I'm assuming to keep the price low. Okay, another downside to this product is, I mentioned before, how light it is. Now, if you're doing an exercise like this, I've got 10 pounds on the machine right now. Using the ankle strap, it works. But as you would imagine, you turn the weight up. That beep is extremely annoying, by the way. No way to turn that down that I know of. I've got 23 pounds on here now. Watch what happens on my first rep here. I'm just pulling the machine along. 20 pounds. So I would have to put a foot on here and that changes my whole range of motion. It's just not the same when I'm doing it like that. You need to be in the right stance and have the proper range of motion and form to do the exercise properly. This doesn't only apply for the ankle strap, this applies for anything that you're not standing on the machine for and you're doing some kind of horizontal row. You're just gonna be pulling the machine along with anything more than 20 pounds on it. So taking a look at the unit itself, at the dial, just so you understand how it works, you uh, can double tap to turn it off, tap it to turn it back on. Did I mention how annoying that beep is? Push once. To turn it on, you got the play button. 
And that's how you can dial in your weight. It'll show you the time since it's been on and how many calories you've burned. If you don't want to pause it, just tap it once and it's paused and you can't do anything while it's paused, but pretty simple, but uh, it's not too overly complicated, which is a good thing. It does what you need and not any more than that. So the battery compartment is on the bottom side here. We are working with a 2000 milliamp hour battery running at uh, 11 volts there. Not a super huge battery, about the same size you'd find in a cell phone roughly, but it's uh, enough to get you through your workout. Now, let's go ahead and assemble the Pro or Plus version, I can't remember what they call it, of the model that gives you the rower capabilities, it gives you the fly capabilities, it doubles the capabilities of this machine. So it is definitely something to consider if you're going to purchase this. So real quick, before we actually go ahead and assemble that, I have a crane scale here. We're gonna test the accuracy of the machine against a uh, normal weight here. I've got a 30 pound dumbbell. Let's bring it over here. Okay, here's the dumbbell, 30 pound dumbbell. As you can see, we are reading 31 pounds, we know that the scale is accurate. Okay, we've got this side on 60 total, which means 30 each side, because according to the box here, the resistance level, 100 levels, 0.5 kilograms each increment. So this should be 30 kilograms. Let's change the scale to kilograms, and let's see what we get. I saw 13, 13 again, let me go fast this time, 14, 13, 14, let me just show you that I'm still on 60 levels still and we're only getting 15 kilograms. We should be getting 30. Now let's convert this to pounds just to make you double sure that we know what we're doing here. Maximum resistance is 110 pounds on each side. Level 100 should be 110 pounds on each side. So let's measure that. Change this back to pounds. We should be getting 110 pounds. All right, let's see what we got here. What do we get, 50, 54, 52, 54, I'll go real slow on this one, 53, 54. Okay, so we're gonna do this one more time. We've got the bar set up on both sides, so we've got maximum weight. We're gonna turn this on to 100. Okay, so we've got 220 pounds, one lift point. I got the scale hooked up. We're gonna do this in one take. Wind me up there, cameraman. We've got zero pounds on the scale. We should see, hopefully, 220. Let's see what we've got. 140, I think was the highest I saw. Only 42. Back down to zero. 148. 145. 140. And 47 I saw. So in post we'll actually be able to see the highest number that we get right now, I'm seeing about 148. Now I'm just proving that the digital weight still reads on the scale accurately when using something like the total. So we've got the total hooked up, 40 pounds is turned on to this arm and the scale is hooked up.
45. Okay, okay, okay. 43. Now let's set the weight to 100 pounds for just one arm. Total has max is 200 pounds and see if we can get the full 100 pounds that is advertised here. Something that we could not get with the unit top. Okay, 100 pounds. Let's see. It's uh, 90. I think I saw 100. 110. Yep, there's 100. If I could hold it. Take this. There it is. There it comes. All right. That just proves. That just proves that digital weight is still real weight when done properly with something like the tonal. Unfortunately, maybe I have a bad unit here, but the uh, unit top is not looking great so far. Okay, it is a new day, and as you saw, I assembled the plus version of the Unitop U trainer. And just for reference, I did not have any kind of instructions on assembly, and it was fairly straightforward. The only reason I didn't get any instructions is because this is a pre release and they didn't have those printed yet. So I just kind of did what I thought worked out, and it, it is kind of straightforward. So not a big deal there, but you will be getting your own manual when you order this, obviously. This is a pre-release, so I didn't get that, so not a big deal. I showed you that there are wheels on the side of the U-Trainer itself when you're using it standardly, but you could also wheel it around, even with this on there, to go left and right. But the Plus version also has its own set of wheels on the back, so portability is still there, so you don't have to slide this around on the floor. You can really move it around as you need it. And if you do want to fold this away, it still tucks up pretty tightly against your wall. You just slide the chair back, take this screw out, and there's a pin, pin right here. So set those aside. And then you lock the chair back all the way. Fold this up. Put the pin back and you've got a pretty tight to the wall system here. Something like that. We're sticking out, I don't know, four feet at the most here. So it does store somewhat nicely. Obviously nowhere near as tightly as just the U-Trainer itself, but obviously you've got a lot going on here. So not bad as far as storage with the plus version attached. The plus add-on attaches to the U-Trainer with two bolts on the back using an Allen wrench. So it's not exactly easy to take the plus version off of the Unitop just for storage, but it is possible if you, have, if you are that tight on space. And just like that, you are set up for training again. I've had this set up for a few days now with the plus set up like this, and my favorite part about it is the ability to use it as a rower. If we just unclip the seat here, we can let it glide freely. And I will say that this glides much smoother than I thought it would, given that this is not a rower. This is kind of an all-in-one system. I've used some pretty high-end rowers like the Averon and uh, Concept2 and something like that. I wouldn't say it's as good as those, but it's definitely passable for what it is. And all we have to do to use it to row is pull this down. And we're pretty much ready to go. We just turn on some weight. We kind of just have to guess with the weight now because we know that it's not super accurate, at least not my model. And you're rowing away. 
Now, somehow I didn't realize we have two phone holders on this, one right in front of me here, one behind me here. They could also hold a tablet. It does expand pretty far. You can swivel it vertically or horizontally. Right now we have it vertical, just so it's easier for you guys to see as I record the screen. And we can put this in just a free style handle move and we can use it as a rower and show our metrics on the screen there as we row. Now it doesn't have games and all that kind of thing like some of the high-end rowers, but it gives you some information that you may want to know. You can see that the app is giving some audible cues when you are finished with a rep. You've got your speed metrics per side. It also shows how much weight you have per side. It's not picking up all of my reps. Once again, the app is not complete. They've got some work to do on it, but it does give you some visual cues. Or you could just turn this thing horizontally and watch some Netflix, I mean, or YouTube. The good thing about this is it's not just a rower. You can easily just flip this up, lock in your seat, Increase your weight a little bit. And now you've got a cable machine. A little bit too much weight. Ugh. And since each side has its own independent motors, you can do things like punching independently. And other machines like the Tonal, for example, would kind of fight against yourself because it's using one big motor on the inside, whereas this, you've got independent sides. You can even set the weights differently if you have a partner you're working with or something like that. Let's take another quick look at the app here. And as I said before, it's not refined yet. It needs some work, but if we just jump over to all exercises, you can see that we actually do have over a hundred exercises and all of them require you standing on the unit as we talked about before, just so it doesn't move around on you. But I didn't really make it clear earlier that a whole lot could be done with the machine. It really can be, especially leg workouts, as long as that 150, 160 pounds that we measured is enough for you, especially with something like deadlift or squat. It could max out pretty quickly for you, but not for everyone, certainly. Just gonna scroll through here, just so you can see some of the things that can be done on the machine itself. So you can count on at least 50% more exercises when using the plus attachment. They don't have anything in the app for it yet. They don't even have a physical manual that they could send me. They sent me a Excel spreadsheet that's kind of hilarious as far as trying to read it and translate it into how to use it with this machine. So I just kind of disregarded that and figured it out on my own and you just kind of have to be creative. If you know how to use a fly machine at the gym, you can kind of make it work here or if you know how to do things like uh, use a rower. It's pretty self-explanatory, but pretty happy with the machine overall. I still have a little bit more to get used to with it. It's kind of quirky in some ways. Build quality is not the nicest that I've ever seen, but we just have to look at that, uh, at least the pre-release price of $500 for the U-Trainer itself, another 150 bucks, I believe, for the Plus. If you're gonna jump for the U-Trainer, I would definitely get the plus option, it's kind of a no-brainer. And it surprisingly fits me, I'm 6'4", and I do not max out the seat as far as sliding backwards or reaching forwards with the handles. The bar does hit the back of the seat here when using that, so that's kind of why I stick to using the handles more. But the seat doesn't slide too far back. My feet fit in the plastic footholds here. They're a little bit wonky, but it fits. I mean, it works, it's not the nicest, but I have to say it works. So if you can look around a lot of the disadvantages that I've talked about in this video, I would go ahead and have to give this a recommendation. Just keep in mind everything that I've talked about here as far as the weight being off, 
if you can deal with kind of figuring out what weight is right for you and not really paying attention to what it actually says it is, then yeah, I would go ahead and give this a recommendation. So if you think you're gonna pick this up and get yourself a good leg workout, for example, a full body workout, you are sorely mistaken. It does have limitations. I am not considered to have the strongest legs in the world, but I'm well beyond maxing this out as far as squats and deadlifts, those sort of things. If you're looking for high rep things with lighter weight, maybe you are a smaller person and just looking to kind of stay fit and get a good workout in, but not necessarily super heavy weights as far as those sorts of things go. Or you want to take this on the go with you. I'm going to take this thing camping with me because when I'm on my four or five day camping trips, I kind of just stop working out because I'm so used to having the tonal at home. So this will be a nice thing to take with me to be able to use while traveling. If you just know what you're getting, and I hope I kind of gave you some insight on what that is, then I would definitely recommend picking one of these up, especially at the current Indiegogo price of 500 bucks, 650 bucks with the plus option. I do want to thank Unitop for sending the product out to me to review honestly, and I hope you guys found value in the honest review. If you did, leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing down below. I will see you guys in the next video.